Hi you guys, welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I wanted to bring back some of my favorite videos to film. Haven't done one in a while and I miss doing these and a lot of you guys have been saying please bring them back and those are my financial videos. I personally love talking about personal finance and just like finding ways to improve and it doesn't have to be this thing that's like super daunting even though sometimes it feels so overwhelming trust me i have been there you guys know i have been there but i think some great news to remind ourselves and especially as we're in a new year now and it's a bit of a reset is like we are in control. We are the only ones in control of our finances. We're the only ones in control of how much money we're able to make, how much we're able to save, and what we're able to like do with our income. So today I wanted to talk you guys through my budget, how I budget, how you can really easily make a budget for yourself if you don't already have one. Before this video starts, if you appreciate financial videos and you want more of these from me this year, go ahead and give this video a like to let me know. It'll really help me to just see that you guys want to see more videos like this and there will be resources in the description box down below like some of the things I talk about in this video so make sure you guys check that out as well all right let's go ahead and get into it I've got my laptop here I'm sitting at my desk and just a little bit of background for me and budgeting I started budgeting like I think right around 2018 or something and I honestly only did it temporarily I was in kind of a bad financial place I made several videos at this time. I will link some of these like on the screen as cards if you guys want to like open them in a new tab and watch it after this if you're interested in any of those topics. So I did an initial budgeting video like I think right around 2018 which is so outdated now. It's not how I would currently budget. It was like very very simple but with that being said I did get out of the habit of budgeting for years probably like around four or five years and I didn't start implementing like heavy budgeting again I've always been good at like tracking my income but last month I got really serious about getting back into my budgeting and it doesn't have to be this like really sad thing like oh my gosh I'm not doing anything fun I would think about budgeting if you've never like done one and you're like should I is it worth doing it I think a way I'm trying to think of budgeting is like this is the best way that your money can work for you and how you can kind of like keep yourself in a better place rather than getting to that place where you're really really stressed out and unaware and in a bad place because you weren't tracking your expenses and then something comes up and you're like oh shit before I show you all my budgeting template, I wanted to share with you something that I've been utilizing recently that you guys might have something like this on your banking apps, on your savings apps. Like I will list some on the screen that can help you track your money. I've talked about this before. I think it's nice to have like a version on the computer, but then it's also really nice for me to have like on my actual checking account what is going in and going out every day. So I use a tool called Spending Buckets. Now this is just like what it's called on my particular bank. So you're might not have it or that it might have something similar this has been so helpful to me like every day I log in and I see like what money I have for these certain things so I'm gonna take you guys through my categories I'm not gonna show you the amounts that I have in there just because that is like a little bit personal for me but just know that there's like an amount over to the right side here this is in my personal checking account by the way this is not my savings account did kind of want to say we're not going to really go into savings very much in this video this video like i said is more like an intro to budgeting and how i do it and we can definitely talk about savings more in other videos so these are categories that are like reoccurring expenses for the most part for me that i want to put money away for so these are the different categories i have and things that i want to be like actively putting money away for and saving for that i know are coming up by the way you guys the amounts that you have like the target amounts that you see here some of those are like accurate to what I would really want to save some of them are a little off to be honest because it's not always a monthly thing some of them like increase or decrease like certain bills are more money or less money in the month you guys might have some bills that are like that so don't get too caught up in like the exact amounts and like over analyzing that because it's just kind of what I have in here right now it absolutely could change like I could change these amounts right now if I wanted to so beauty treatments like getting my eyebrows done things like that we have business expenses that's a personal one for me you might not have that coffee shops I give myself a $25 budget in the month I try not to go over that these match up with what I have in my budget um, like my fixed costs and some costs that are like they vary 
by month to month too so we'll talk about that more in just a minute we have credit card payoff that one's kind of like self-explanatory what i need to pay off on my cards if i have a balance currently on my cards dogs plus pet insurance fitness i have all of mine like combined in there but you could separate it if you have like different fitness things that you pay for like I personally do then we have food plus drinks out plus dates and I just know I'm gonna spend on that stuff so it's like setting myself up for success rather than being like oh shit I don't have money because I didn't put it away for that stuff because it wasn't like a bill like I know I'm gonna spend on that stuff pretty much yes every month so having some money set aside when I can for that stuff and for me this isn't about keeping these like full all the time honestly several of these right now have zero dollars in them because right now I just have certain things that I can put my money towards and certain things that I can't but when I have something coming up like a nail appointment then I'm like okay I can go ahead and put you know I want to put that money away a few days in advance for my nail appointment and maybe I don't have any money in my coffee shop account because that's something that I'm not prioritizing right now again this doesn't have anything to do with my money and savings that is separate and this is just like my personal day-to-day -day checking account which I really don't like to keep too much money in because it tempts me to spend more so I really like keeping a smaller amount that I can manage day-to-day -day. you guys can see the other categories we have here general spending is a bigger one because that could be so many things that's basically like whenever I shop online go to Target do a home improvement type of thing all that kind of stuff i just put in general spending because i don't want to categorize it down to the like nitty gritty internet health insurance newly um all right so that's how i use my banking app and spending buckets so definitely look into something like that if you think that would be helpful for you now let's get on my computer. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. So I hope that this helps you just to kind of see how we're doing this. All right, so this is my budget template. This is something that I'm gonna link down below that you guys can use to fill out and make your own budgets. That's what I did. I'm actually gonna link some resources down below because I watched this girl's YouTube video of like how to create a budget in Google Sheets because I didn't really, I wanted to follow someone's template. Basically, I didn't wanna start from scratch. I'm not super familiar with Google Sheets and stuff like this, so I want you guys to be able to just go down below in my description box and click this file. If you just have a Google account, it should pop up. So you can get your numbers in here and like do it with me as you're watching this video if you want to. Also wanna say the amounts that you see here are not accurate in the sense of I put in random numbers here. Some of them like in the expenses are pretty similar to my expenses, but none of them are exact. As far as the income goes, I literally just wanted to set it exactly at 5,000 because I thought that was like a good number to work with. At the bottom here, we have simple budget, which is what we're on now and it does go down. So let me show you guys and we're gonna go through this together. And then over here, we have yearly finance tracker. Now, this is something I haven't filled out yet. And again, this is a template from that YouTube video. And this is something that I think I will try to fill out. Obviously, it's only mid-January now. So when I actually figure out like how much I have made in January, I can put that here. This is totally optional. Like if you want to have a yearly budget, you can use this, but you absolutely don't have to. It goes down. It's honestly kind of like a little... It's a lot, it's very detailed. So I will link like that YouTube video down below to the girl that made this and she kind of explains this a little more. We're not gonna be doing this today and talking about this today. I just wanted you guys to know that that is over here on the right if you do want to utilize that. But back to the simple budget. Also, you guys, I hope I'm not getting too confusing here. I do have a second budget option to show you that we'll go over in a minute, but this is kind of what it looks like. And this is basically like a simplified version if you don't like Google Sheets. I actually used just like a list version. This for me and my brain like makes sense, just like listing my income and listing my expenses. So that is kind of what this one looks like. And we'll go through this after. Um, but I feel like that is just kind of like an easy way to get started if you don't 
like the idea of doing like the Google Sheets thing. So I'm gonna link this down below too for you guys and you can like go in and edit it or you can make your own. Like I don't exactly know how I'm gonna link it, but again, like change out the amounts, change out the expenses to what fits for you. Obviously this was just like the example that I'm going to show you guys today. All right, let's do this. So the first section we have here is income. And again, this will be something that you guys can just go in and like click this box. You can click delete and you can just put in your like change out all this stuff. So for me, I have like my different income sources here. If you have one source of income, you just put that you can delete. You can like click right here and just click delete row if you don't need one or you can insert a row above insert one like below. So I have a few different forms of income. So if you have a couple different ones too, feel free to list those both here. Again, these amounts, like I said, are just random amounts that I put in for the sake of this video. We have my main social media job, my part-time job, and then extra, I put Depop, et cetera, but that's basically like selling things on Facebook Marketplace, Depop and Poshmark listings. I have a few like affiliate programs that I do. So that's basically anything extra that's kind of like unexpected income, but I will, I know like I'll probably get it in the month. But when I like know what that all is, or like I make a sale, I can go in here and like add in those amounts. It's up to you how often you would want to do that. I'm personally probably going to do it like at the end of the month, I'm going to go in here and actually put like the extra income I did make. So then we have our total income. Again, we're going based off of 5,000. And by the way, this is monthly. I feel like maybe I should have said that. I feel like calculating your monthly income should probably be somewhat simple. Like if you don't already do that, it should be something that's easy to look back at just your paychecks that are coming in. Or like I said, if you have a job like me that it's kind of hard to track, I would probably go in and do it towards like the end of the month or as certain like paychecks come in, then you can go and like start just adding your income in there. All right, guys, now we are moving on to our expenses. So I want to show you here um, I have my fixed expenses, which we're going to talk about that. These are listed here and then totaled up and we'll go through that. And then down here, we also have our non-fixed expenses. So this is where it gets like, I don't want to say confusing, but things that you know, like you're probably going to spend on, but you don't know how much it's going to be. So these are some of my categories too, and how like I want to budget for these specific things. That I don't exactly know what the cost is going to be, but I can decide if I want to, or if I'm going to be able to put money away for that for the month. So these are some of my non-fixed things you can kind of get an idea of, but we're going to go back to this. Okay, let's start with our expenses that are fixed. So you can probably tell from my categories and these are like my actual categories that I use. You can add or delete things in here, make it fit your life, of course. So your fixed expenses are things that you know you're gonna spend money on every single month. I think it's really good to get an idea, like to really be familiar with what these are, just so that you know you're like setting yourself up again for success rather than being super stressed out, spending all your paycheck money. Like just this gives me so much peace of mind. Again, I just wanna say this, I have adjusted these amounts. They are similar to what I spend, but they are not exact. Please keep that in mind and try not to like judge me in the comments because like I said, I wanted to just make this like an example for this video. I've broken down my bills. I find that that's just helpful for me to have the bills listed individually. And then I have both of my credit cards if I have a balance on those. So for an example for this video, Amex and 150 on the Visa. Um, my retirement fund contribution, that's like an example of I would try to put that away monthly if I can afford it. Gas money, I'm giving myself like $100 for the month. I feel like that's pretty good for me personally. I usually fill up twice in the month, but that's going to have to be something that you adjust. Of course, all of these will. My new lease subscription, etc. Now, why we want to do this, of course, is because we want to make sure that all of our expenses 
fixed and non-fixed expenses are things that we have enough income for, okay? So that's like why you really, really want to do this, to make sure you're not spending completely over your means. So it's really good to just list everything out, go through your subscriptions, go through all of it, and list everything out that is a monthly recurring cost. So now you can see I have budget, actual and then the difference this is something that i got from that girl's youtube video and i think it actually is really helpful because you have the amount that you're budgeting for for example this rent i know that that's going to be every month what it is for me personally However, something like my gas bill, for example, here, that changes, like that is not gonna be the same amount for me month to month, the same with my water bill. So some things here, if the budget and the actual match up, that means that it was like a fixed cost. If they don't match up, it means that it was like I budgeted, for example, the YMCA. It's weird, my thing was like $38 for the month and then it was $39 this month. So I'm like, I don't know what happened, but I wanna be able to budget $40 for that. And then I put in the actual column, I put like what I actually spent, what I actually got charged. So then we have a difference of a dollar. I'm in the green, a dollar. And if you follow this template, it should like do the same thing for you where if you put in a higher amount in budget and then you actually spend this actual amount, then it will do that automatically for you. It should, hopefully. Okay, now I wanted to show you guys an example of what happens if you go over. First of all, I just wanna say that this is shared with Jared and that the dog food is something that's a little more expensive. I combine it with the groceries because we're buying it, the ingredients for it twice a month. And so it is making our grocery budget a little higher. So I'm trying to stay, this is my honest truth right now. I'm trying to stay at 300. That would be 150 for me, 150 for Jared. Once again, please don't come for me, but it has been hard for me to, to stay there. Like groceries, I feel like have gotten very expensive. We cook a lot, we're using a lot of ingredients all the time and it's just honestly difficult for me. Basically this month I did overspend in groceries and that's something that I'm really glad I have this budget for because I added this all up yesterday and I could see that, oh my gosh, how the heck have I already spent $380 in groceries? I know, once again, please don't come for me, but it turns the difference to red and you will see, oh my gosh, I overspent on that. So with that being said, there's like two things I can do. You know, I can try to make my groceries less. I can try to save on my groceries, which is probably gonna be my first course of action. But if this is something that's just not realistic, we're gonna have to just go here and increase our grocery budget. Like that is just something that I might have to do. And I think it's really good to have these amounts and then to actually see what you're spending because you can see if you do need to raise something or if something can go lower. I really hope I'm making sense to you guys. Like for example, for my gas bill, I looked at the last like year of gas bills and I don't think it was getting over $50 a month personally for like what I had seen. So I wanna budget for it to go up to $50. This month it was $41. So I have $9 left over, which is good. But you know what I mean? Like you wanna budget for a little bit more for certain bills that they're not a fixed cost because in the summer, for example, my power bill, which where is that on here? In the summer, my power bill is a lot higher. I think it's, I assume it's just from the AC, whereas this month it was only $69, but it's different month to month. So let's scroll down. And now I wanted to kind of show you guys, these last three are things I haven't paid yet. So I actually don't know like what amount I'm going to pay. I haven't paid the credit cards yet. I'll typically do that like, well, obviously when they're due <laughs> or like towards the end of the month because that's when I get my bigger payment towards the end of the month. So I will go ahead and fill in all of these after I make those payments. But right now it's appearing as I've paid nothing so that I, so I still have that money showing. It should do this math automatically for you guys if you put all your amounts in here. And then it should add this up to be right, but I will say go ahead and just double check that so you're gonna like add everything up here starting from zero if it's a negative you're gonna subtract 
$80 versus add it and hopefully it gives you the right number but I double I actually triple checked all of this stuff because some of them I had to use my calculator on my phone so now we have our totals down at the bottom this number is my total fixed monthly expenses the number in the middle is what I've actually spent and then the number on the end in green is the difference. So once again, this number is going to change because I'm going to pay, you know, hopefully all of these amounts. So it will actually be much lower. Okay, now I'm gonna scroll down and we are going to do our non-fixed expenses. This is similar to what we've just done, but like I said, these categories are a little bit more like they're not necessarily a fixed cost, but I still want to put them in my budget because these are things that I'm probably going to be spending money on. Even if I don't, that's okay. This is gonna be personal. These are some of my categories. My absolute biggest one is my general spending. I just, once again, I know that I'm gonna be spending money there. So right now I'm allocating, for the sake of this video, I'm allocating 300 and I haven't put in the actual amount because I will do that again. Personally, I'm gonna do it at the end of the month because I'm still spending money and I don't know how much it's gonna be yet. We have travel costs, which may or may not be something that I spend on in the month, but I want to allocate. This month was 130 because I booked an Airbnb and that is the only cost for travel that I've spent so far. Coffee shops, like I said, I budget 25. I have put in what I've spent so far this month on coffee shops. And again, it's gonna pop out with a difference. So let's talk about something like medical appointments. That's something that right now I don't have a budget to allocate for in the month. I don't usually have an appointment in the month, but this month I did go to the chiropractor. I didn't know how much it was gonna be, but I got new insurance and honestly my insurance isn't that good. So it was $50, which was unfortunate. But yeah, that's something that I'm like, okay, I'm negative $50 because I didn't allocate money for that this month and I ended up going. So that's, we're in the red for that but hey it is what it is so again go through what you're spending go through your banking app really in detail see what you're spending on you can use these categories similar categories to what I've had some of them probably won't be applicable to you like shipping labels so again add up all those numbers in your budget column my total was 835 the actual amount so far was 251 and then we had the difference which once again like i'm gonna have to go in and put this stuff you guys at the end of the month if i did spend money on one of these things so these numbers again will probably change but that is what the budget is for okay now i wanted to show you guys i don't know why i didn't put it here but let's just do it right now together so let's take our income which is five thousand dollars now we're going to subtract our expenses and we're going to see how much we have left. Again, this is just an example. So let's just take this number. Now you could take the actual number when we know what it's going to be. But like I said, this is not currently accurate. So let's take the expected expenses and we're going to subtract that amount from our monthly income. So 5000 minus 32.95 equals 1700 wait 1705 dollars then i'm going to scroll down again and take what i've budgeted for my non-fixed expenses and also subtract that so 1705 minus 835 we're left with 870 dollars that's going to be something that you may have an amount at the end of the month you may realize you're in negative here which would mean you know you either need to try and increase your income or you need to try and decrease your expenses but for this example we're gonna have 870 dollars left over which would be great because you never know if an unexpected expense is gonna come up lastly i want to show you guys my what i personally think is a more simplified version of this so if that was just like too complicated for you and you're like i'm not i, I wouldn't personally do that but i want to have something that is keeping me on track with my finances i would definitely recommend doing something like a list format again it just like makes sense for my brains which again i will link this down below so you can go in and like edit 
you can change these amounts right now we're in the like um read only we're not in the edit version but like you can highlight that and you would be able to delete that and put these amounts in for yourself so first section we have our monthly income i just feel like listing it it's just simple and then at the bottom i kind of like to change the color green is just a fun one for income right it just makes sense so you're gonna list out at the bottom like add those numbers up and total it out and put your total income and i put january because i wanted to like clarify that this was you know a month to month thing again then we have our section for our monthly expenses again these are the fixed costs like we just talked about and again you can just list them out you can change this format you guys i like doing the bold here with the amounts and then i also you guys for example like here how i put one one that is the date if i have put a date here next to it that means that's the date that it was due so like my rent is due on the fifth my newly gets charged on the 15th so i really like putting that that's something that like you could also put you know here i could put what date my gas bill is and i personally find that like really helpful because we have like five different bills and it's hard to remember like what things are getting charged like even though i get emailed that it's just kind of like hard to remember so i want to be able to like budget and know what is coming up another thing i've done here is if i put paid that literally means that i personally have already paid this this month i think this is really great too because with this list format you're not getting quite as much like organization so you could put that to just be like okay this stuff is already paid and you don't have to budget for it in the month anymore and then you can also like really easily see like okay i haven't you know had my nail appointments yet my nail budget whatever and again don't come for me okay nails are expensive so we have those all listed out again and then at the bottom we have our total fixed expenses and and I just went through that whole column and added everything up again it's the same amount as we had on the Google Sheet so again we have our other expenses and I just clarified here like non essentials that vary we've already talked about this so I won't go through it again but I guess this time I put guilt free spending instead of general spending I think that's kind of a fun term because I don't want to feel bad about you know buying myself something online or going to target and treating myself if i budget for that amount you know what i mean like i don't want to feel bad about that so i think it's important to budget for that stuff if you know like it's it's gonna happen at the bottom here i put some ones that are like a little bit iffy like my tax payments isn't something that comes out every month i pay those every quarter that is gonna of course depend on you too that's just for my particular work and then the medical appointments we already kind of talked about so then we have our total extra expenses budget which again is the same as it was before now i don't know why i put this here on this one and not on the budget template so maybe i'll try to move it over but we just have that math that we did before which is taking our income minus our total expenses so make sure you add up both of these and then we're left with the 870 dollars again which i just put some examples of what you could use your extra money for here so i hope that was helpful to see too all right you guys i feel like i've been talking for a while and i'm going to try to simplify this video down like edit it down so it's not super long but if it is long just know that i was just trying to explain it to the best of my ability i really hope this was helpful definitely let me know if you want to see more finance videos and like what other stuff specifically you would want to see let me know like if you want updates on the budgeting like if you guys want me to do you know in a quarterly budgeting video or twice a year or something like that where we're checking in with our budget definitely let me know if this seems super overwhelming just know that you don't have to sit and do this all at one time like the great thing i think about google drive i love freaking google google drive is like it saves your work automatically for you you can go back and edit it later you know if you only have like 20 or 30 minutes in the day to like dedicate to making your budget just keep doing it when you have time until you're until you're done and then you have your budget and you can work with that for 
hopefully the whole year and beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was a switch up from my typical vlogs and everything, but I really just wanted to switch it up. And you guys said on Instagram that you wanted to see this video. All right, you guys don't forget to check out the description box because there's going to be links to this stuff and the videos and resources that helped me with creating my budget. Definitely check that out down below and I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye.